Association, Peruvian University, Nepal, and the Institute for Development and Communication, IDC, India. This is the program, and last two, three months ago, we visited the different stations, and not this is in Nepal, and this, this visit within our uh, data collection were done in the various countries, and the Nepal is one of them. And the Nepal also we did the seven, eight stations we visited and the collected the data from the uh, police station. And from there, their role, their crime control, violence, and uh, others have how they have been working their job. This we have already collected. And I know this is in the uh, finalization or this is the seminar, dissemination seminar or workshop. <coughs> For to run the uh, to run the uh, uh, workshop, the chairman is needed. That's why uh, the professor Technak sir is leading, uh, playing a leading role in the Nepal, sur Nepal survey. And uh, so I would like to request Professor Dr. Technak Takal. He is the campus chief and the department head of the public admissions campus, Kerwan University. Mm -hmm. And, <clears throat> and uh, on the permission of the session chair, I would like to request Professor Tekna Dakar in the chair of the session to welcome all the participants in this workshop. Thank you, Dr. Narendra, uh, respected director, Radio Kandaika, program director, Ashish Global Alliance from India, uh, MS Sangeeta Puri, Gender Research Scholar from India, Mr. Minna Singh, SP from Punjab, uh, India. Uh, Sunil Arora, Publicity and System Manager of the Police Station in India, and our professors from the and faculty members from our department, Police Senior Officers, SP Pitama Adigari, SP Ishwar Babu, and other police officers. and other participants, uh, chairperson of the Tiova, including other participants, ladies and gentlemen. First of all, I would like to welcome you in this small uh, half-day uh, workshop. This workshop is basically organized to share the survey that was conducted in the last year in Nepal that was conducted during second week of December. So primarily it was scheduled to uh, conduct this survey or visit the those stations during the uh, first week of November to learn of our relation and some other uh, commitments we could not Managed that time, and we visited uh, different police stations. And uh, usually, the police visit, uh, station visit week is a global event during which a small team of students visit police stations in a number of countries to assess certain aspects of the services they provide. We used 20 uh, questions in that survey. Uh, each question basically focused five areas like community orientation, equal treatment to the, of the public, detention condition, physical condition, and transparency and accountability. We visited uh, 10 uh, police stations of the uh, 
seven districts. Right. From Kathmandu, we visited both the police station, Baneshwar police station, and Balalu police stations. From Lalitpur, we visited Mangalpaja police station. From Maktapur, Thimi police station. From Dharing, Majuri police station. From Chittagong, Mughli police station. From Gorkha, uh, Gorkha district police. And from Kamamu, Abu Karyani police station and Dumri police station. Actually, our department, our university, feels uh, very much free and honor to work with IDG, IDG, the Institute for Development and Communication. Although we didn't know each other, uh, we were communicating by email. Uh, later on, when Dr. Renuka came, the to for study, and only we, we see each other and know each other. This workshop is basically our night to share how the, uh, this police station visit uh, program, uh, the, the survey that they have conducted and how to battle the result. Uh, preliminary, uh, she had informed us by email that uh, Nepal uh, police stations were found very, uh, you know, very, very uh, good services, especially uh, Gorkha people provide the student stands at the first uh, for the delivery of services. Uh, some of the participants uh, visiting Gorkha are also here, and other police uh, stations, those visited, are also participating here. So they can also hear during the discussion. Uh, with these few words, maybe I don't want to take much time. And uh, Dr. Rehukai uh, told me that this year in 2014 also there will be more visits and probably from the last past experience we will have more confidence and also uh, will be, uh, we will also use local institutions, local NGOs, clubs to, 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 to this visit program and hopefully this kind of initiation will be continued and there will be other uh, research and other collaborations between our uh, department and IDC. So with these few words, I would like to again welcome you all here and in the meantime, our uh, delegates coming from India hope they, their stay will be comfortable over here, though the visit was very short, we would like them to take a little bit away from Kathmandu to see some kind of some uh, rural setting also, but due to the time constraint, they couldn't manage this time, maybe hopefully next time we will have, they will provide us more time and we will also uh, be happy to, to take them other other places to see the stations to see our uh, rural setting and put this most again I would like to welcome again and uh, thank you very much. Thank you Chair and Professor Dakal. We welcome you all and that you managed to come here despite your visit schedule. Now second speaker in this program is uh, is uh, Dr. Rayanka Daga. She is going to give her delivery promo promoting citizen centric police station of globe review of the PSPW. And she is, uh, she is program di director of Altus Global Airlines India. Welcome, Daga, Dr. Daga, and to deliver my speech. Mr. Ramanjar Singh and distinguished participants. 
At the onset, I'd like to thank the Central Department of Public Administration, Triburban University, Bangalore, for organizing this core group meeting on police station visitors week and sharing our experiences from this region. Police station reforms are essential to strengthen citizens' confidence in institutions of justice delivery to make democracy functional in terms of generation of wealth, eradication of poverty, and elimination of social exclusion. This is particularly important for most of our post-colonial societies. In these societies, there is an excessive reliance of the state on the security forces. Even in Nepal, anywhere you go, I think the first, uh, uh, whether it's a palace you're visiting or even the religious place, okay. what we have seen here is you have a number of security forces and even the army deployed to provide safety for citizens and the pilgrims. So there is an excessive reliance on the state on security forces. In a broader context, the rules of exchange between the citizens and the government have proved inadequate to protect the rights and the entitlements of citizens. And it is the police station which is the nerve center of policing. In fact, the police station is the first point of contact between a citizen and the uh, police. It is here the citizens step in to report a crime or to seek security from the police. But service delivery at this cutting edge level has never been the focus of police reforms. And this is true not just in the subcontinent, but globally, world over. You find that it is tenure, the administrative reforms, it is issues of uh, um, uh, political exclusion from policing, which have been a main issue. And police station per se has never been a focus of police reforms globally. There is a need to strengthen the internal accountability and also to make police directly accountable to the citizens they serve. This will lead to restoration of hierarchy, performance based incentives, posting and transfers, and insulation of the police from external party interference. These, in fact, have been the focus areas of most reform in police. However, second parameter is to build the capacity of the police stations to maintain law and order and ensure that police services meet the community needs. Police stations have to be equipped in terms of human resources, equipment and technology to function as per the local specificities. It may be more accurate to set up police stations that commemorate with the citizens' needs, local specificities, and likely means of crime rather than just political considerations. A third parameter is to put in place an institutional mechanism to make the police stations responsive to the needs of vulnerable groups like gender, perhaps tribal, migrants, workers and children. And we're going to share some of these uh, experiments, one of which has been conducted with Reverend Yakuni. Mr. Dominic is here to share with all of us how they have been able to institutionalize this initiative. And a fourth parameter is to make the police service delivery transparent to institutionalization of community policing partnerships. The need is to move from civic engagement in police station reforms to a more sustainable model of station within the framework of democratic governance. It is in this context that police station research requires relevance. It has been striving to encourage police public discourse with the police and the state institutions on these issues. What I'm going to do is now give you a very brief uh, account of what exactly police, the police station is the week is. I think some of you may not be aware of how this program has been held globally. And then I'll uh, quickly move on to what we find over a decade of participation now in police station is the week globally. What are the main lessons, important lessons to find? Uh, uh, the police station is the week, it's an international program that has been organized annually in Quebecers since 2006. And it took about three years to uh, finalize a 20-point program in theaters globally. It was tested across the five continents, and this is a scale which is implemented globally in more than 45 countries of the world. During this week, thousands of citizens are received by hundreds of police stations in more than 20 countries. Each year, we have we identify about 20 countries where this work is taken over. 
it mobilize, or this mobilizes citizens via <coughs> local and national news. I think this is a very unique aspect of our organization that it's an international global organization that we only work through local partners. So we will work, for instance, here we are working with the Central Department of Public Administration who organizes these visits, recruits and mobilizes citizens and engages with the police to promote and document what kind of best practices have been witnessed. A protocol and measurement system, which has been translated, is available on the web in 17 local languages. And in this year, there were these 22 countries which participated. But interestingly, it is not only the police forces which we have participating, but you also have oversight bodies like human rights commissions, women commissions, ombudspersons. You could have parliamentary members and ministers who inaugurate a program who oversee what kind of uh, relations and exchanges take place. Of course, we have civil society members who are the mainstay of these programs, and even the media. The media also acts as an oversight, as a mobilizer, and as a uh, promoter of the various programs that the police is undertaking, which the community may not be aware of. Uh, in 2013, we had about 12, more than 12,000 uh, citizens across the world who went and raided the local police stations. About 1,340 police stations participated. In Nepal, there were 10 police stations that participated, but in the 22 countries overall, there were 1,340 police stations that visited by more than uh, 12,000 citizens. We had about nearly 400 CDOs, that means to, uh, about 377 civil society organizations that, that were part of this network. Uh, this is our protocol on five, uh, uh, Professor Deknak was mentioning that there are five uh, set, sets of indicators and I'll talk about these, but this is the protocol on which globally local citizens go and rate the police services. And the measurements are then uploaded into the web directly. What the program also does is not recognizes what are the best practices that are being held in different regions of the world. And these are documented so that even the police is able to share across with different police from different parts of the world and also with its community that these are our new innovative programs or these are successful programs or the areas where they are performing well. The first year, uh, the first photograph is of the 2006 police station uh, visitors week, which was held. Uh, the program was held in the Hague, and the mayor of the Hague awarded this uh, president uh, these certificates of recognition to the best performing stations in different regions of the world. The five categories of assessment are community orientation. This pertains to that that how well is the uh, the police station serving its People are people who have easy access to police stations. Can they? Uh, is there staff deployed to address their needs? Is there a reception? Can they go and request for the kind of services they want? In fact, are the, is the public comfortable to walk into a police station? The second aspect pertains to physical conditions. This certainly does not mean how five star looking the police station is, but what kind of is a police station organized in order in order to meet deal with this? Uh, services it's supposed to provide. So is it well organized? Now you have a police station right on top, which is in very dilapidated conditions because as we all know we face a huge resource crunch in our governments, in our, in our states. But if you have well marked police stations, in the sense these are services are provided or these are the direction, this is the uh, reception, this is the area the services you will receive, or like you see at the right hand corner, the, all the uh, material is organized neatly, even if it does not look as if it's very uh, sophisticated, but the, uh, it's very well organized, space is well utilized. Or you would have very high file in organization, uh, police stations also, but the underlying aspect is that all police stations are providing information, demarcated spaces. So I was sharing with somebody in the first year in 2006, a uh, police station in Rajasthan, a rural police station from Rajasthan, in fact, won the best police station award. And it could beat a police station from Los Angeles, which had four helicopters as part of its capacities. So it had four helicopters parked 
in his yard and it could beat that police station for the simple reason that it was providing services to the community which were required. This particular police station in, in Los Angeles had a Spanish population of 60% in its jurisdiction, but it had no material, no pamphlets, no information, all uh, in Spanish. Everything was in English. So the jury said this police station is not uh, catering to even the basic engagement of the citizens, how can it win? Whereas the Shiprabad police station in Rajasthan had different beat officers, had different uh, programs looking for the elderly, for the youth. It had a very well organized system where different sections of the community were engaging weekly with the police station. And they even had a park where parents used to leave their children and when they used to go to the market or for a short time. So that was the kind of security and confidence that that police station aroused. And when this police station was declared the best police station uh, globally, the Rajasthan police declared that all the best practices that were being held in this police station would be done in all the 119 districts of Rajasthan. So these are the kind of uh, engagement and development that such kind of discourse helps. So the third category is of equal treatment without bias in terms of age, ethnicity, or minority. So you have women as one uh, category. You could have people who are disabled, are there ramps and services for them. The fourth area is of transparency and accountability. Very simply, is the police in uniform? Can a certain, can the citizen identify whom they're talking to? Is there a complaint system? Is there a, if the, uh, is there a redressal system? If a citizen is not happy with what, how they're being dealt with, can they appeal to any oversight or to a higher organization, a higher officer? That's why we have, for instance, in Nigeria, you can see the post of all the phone numbers of the senior officers are listed there. So the community can directly contact them in case there is some kind of a grievance. Fifth is detention conditions. People who are accused or in detaining the, the art also have rights. Are they rights to be looked after? For instance, you see in India, just a neat, clean uh, police station, whereas you can see in Nigeria or in Brazil, where you will see, you know, the conditions are so unhygienic and poor. In South Korea, for instance, they mark, the citizens mark much better uh, police station than this Punjab police station, and they said it's poor. They said, why? Because the floor was not heated, according to them. And they said it's cold conditions, but those are the kind of uh, conditions that the public is expecting and used to. So, if they rate the police stations according to what services are available in the hospitals, in their schools, in the local municipalities, and what standard of living the citizens expect. Why did we think of having this police station visitors week? Three aspects. One, to uh, um, promote multicultural perspective. What does that mean? For instance, very simply, if I tell you, have a look at this last corner picture. There's a black dot in the corner. This is a police station in Netherlands, which shows, uh, you know, a lot of the people there are refugees or, uh, you know, asylum seekers, or they have crossed borders from the Middle East, the Caucasian countries, and they do not have valid transport and visa documents. So they are put into jails in their detained. But the black dot signifies where mega, Mecca is direction of Mecca. So these people here know, most of them are Muslims, so they know that if you want to pray, this is the direction. And it gives them a uh, satisfaction that yes, our basic needs are being catered to. Even though we are in detained conditions because we don't have relevant papers, but the police is treating us with dignity, with respect. So these are simple things which make a difference. So, so the quality of service, it's not necessary that at one time or not need clean, but to what extent the police is catering to the needs of the community. What are the good practices? We, it's not just that the police is auditing, the, uh, and the citizens are auditing the police, but also the police is sharing the best practices and are promoting what kind of new programs are coming into the community through these visits. And third, give public accountability. If you are having meetings like this, if media is covering these, if there is engagement of different sections of society and media is, is not only covering meetings but also the visits and also how police is performing on those five indicators, 
there is a built-in uh, consideration for accountability and the idea that the police is responsible, it has to report to the citizens on what it is doing. And this was the first pioneering participatory assessment in the uh, criminal justice sector, this kind of, these kind of things. As I mentioned, from 2002 we started and now it has uh, in 2013 and now we have the next program in 2014. The idea I mentioned of positive accountability, if you just have a look at what people have to say, for instance in Netherlands, uh, the visit was found to be very informative even by people who we expect in these civilized developed countries, they're saying there's much more to know than you assume when you're passing the police station. In Nigeria, the student said, we felt that we could talk to the police like a friend after we had been into these visits because otherwise they were so scared. In Ghana, one of the uh, first times the visits was taken place, a young man told us, the moment I see a police officer working, I get into my cycle and uh, pedal away in the other direction. Now he is one of our uh, community leaders who leads these visits in the police stations. And in Germany, People said that our perception about the, position, uh, about the police has not changed, but it has sharpened our sensitivity and awareness of police work. So you see in developing countries like Africa or Latin America, how just an inlet and access to the police station changes the opinion. Or in the developed countries where they say, even when we have an idea where the police work is, when we are party to these uh, uh, discussions and this uh, talk, engagement, it changes our perspective and our sensitivities in police. And the police, of course, benefits as they are trying to make inroads into the community, gain community trust and confidence. This has helped uh, uh, world over. The police has had positive uh, in, uh, impact on this. And as the uh, fifth important issue has been to create a new role for NGOs in police accountability. So we just get this. We are going to be short of time. Uh, how has the police station is this week? had an impact on police reforms or police station reforms. The three aspects, broad trends which we are seeing globally. One is where the police stations uh, uh, have uh, all the reform is underway, like in Punjab or in Nigeria, where the government ha and the police have been working to make new institutions and change uh, service delivery. I am not going to the Punjab aspect because Mr. Ramindra here will be dealing with it. But just to give you a small example, for instance in Nigeria, the detention conditions are very poor in Nigeria and citizens felt that these need to be improved. So the Human Rights Commission of uh, Nigeria has taken this onus and they have are revamping not only the detention conditions but using that as an oversight to improve the functioning of police services in all, in all uh, areas of whether that's registering crime, increasing uh, interaction with the community, looking into the needs of women and other sections, other tribal sections. So these, so wherever the uh, human, uh, wherever police stations are integrated with local, where local reform is taking place and police station which is being, promotes the kind of reform that is taking place and provides the indicators on which these issues should be uh, tackled. That's one of the main factors we find where change is taking place. The second aspect is where you find uh, this is basically integration where we are seeing this in Punjab, how you said that even the strategic plans reflect these indications. You have capacity building, you have, uh, uh, for instance, the community policing centers, or we have training of uh, the policing, uh, community policing officers, and in various uh, other aspects of engagement. The second area is where human rights standards have got built into the police station. Just these friendly aspects, that there should be a help desk, or there should be a reception, or police should be in uniform, or it should be neat and clean, the Indians should be welcoming. Just these aspects, or there should be directions on where the police station is, identifying that. So these have got integrated into police stations world over which have been participating. So human rights standards get automatically inbuilt into these participating stations. Of course, focus on vulnerable groups. The third area, if you look into, is uh, of building trust. Now, in many of the uh, countries which I was mentioning, we don't have uh, the police is not an active part of uh, the community, and 
and there's a distance between the community and the police. There may have been violence, there may have been a change in regimes. Police is something which is looked with fear and hatred. And we find that in these areas, this in kind of initiative helps in crossing the first layer and building a first point of contact and confidence building. Uh, provides attention to vulnerable groups just uh, and it provides a dialogue. People, citizens start thinking that yes, this is also part of a government service. This is something which we as citizens have a right over. And this kind of debate and dialogue, if not at the police station level, at least in the larger community, has been initiated. The very fact that you have now, you know, they're supposed to have in Liberia, for instance, there's still so much of poverty and conditions are for survival are so difficult. But even the very fact that you have a label saying this is a police station, the police station is supposed to respect citizens and look after their needs, at least respond to them. So some kind of trust building initiatives have taken place. Uh, let's just skip because I don't want to, uh, I think I've already uh, passed my allocated time, but I'm just going to want you to just raise your attention to 10 aspects, 10 lessons which we learned, where we find that in this manner, the police is more attuned and accessible. One, if the police stations are approachable, there may be any kind of uh, uh, services and facilities as long as it's neat, clean, and comfortable. That makes a difference. And places at the police station is like a service delivery. So a one point window. If you enter a police station, all your needs are catered to within the same area, whether it's a domestic violence case, if you have to have a, a look into meet an NGO, a counselor, if all the services are provided in a single window, you don't have to go from building to building or to meet different officials. That's helpful. Then thirdly, if you look into uh, uh, where you, uh, police stations proclaim human rights standards, visibly proclaim that, that raises citizens' confidence. For instance, you, uh, if they know that there are women there, like in Nepal, where we went to a police station yesterday, there were visible women pro uh, police pro uh, presence. If they know there's a health desk, or for instance, if the police is participating in program and saying that we stand by human rights, and then we are giving attention to minority groups, just these kinds of statements inspires confidence in the public. Then making citizens' voices count. If you want to register an FIR, does the police do so? Does it respond to you? Uh, if you want information, is the uh, police on its own holding crime uh, reporting that this, this is the kind of crime which is increasing in this area weekly, monthly, or maybe uh, once in two months? Is there any kind of engagement with civil society? So here you find that the people, citizens' voices do have an effect on police functioning. That raises a kind of legitimacy of police functioning. Then this next layer is co-ownership of citizens. Are citizens part of communities where decisions are made? What kind of services need to be improved? Or what are the gaps? This is a second level, higher level of uh, involvement. Then transparency in crime control. Does the police share its performance that we have been able to control crime in this area? Or this, these are our achievements? If that, that kind of a dialogue builds, again, citizen confidence with the police. Providing data responsive services. For instance, in India, if there is a women are teased on roads or there is sexual harassment, if police have deployed staff outside colleges, outside in buses or in workplaces, there are committees and police is keeping an eye on that, that shows that police is providing data responsive service. So police is responding to your needs, the citizens' specific needs. Another level would be involving the community to prevent crime. This is not just providing information. Generally what happens is the police is looking for citizens to be informers, that where is crime taking place, who are the people who are dealing with drugs or trafficking. But here is the community in effect being involved in policing programs with the, as outreach programs. That's the difference. And these are ongoing, non-stop programs rather than only when a riot takes place or only when there's a uh, threat of violence. If the police is uh, connected to human rights institutions, that's another manner of increasing its legitimacy. For instance, is, uh, is there a 
Ombuds person is a human rights commission open contact with the police with the people of the human rights people or not just NGOs. These are recognized, institutionalized human rights service organizations. These could be semi-government organizations. If the police station is engaging with those kind of outlets, then it increases the police station residency. And lastly, is the, does the police station function like a hospital or a school? For instance, in Punjab, we had the uh, Home Minister declaring that if let the people own the police station the way they will own a school. Unless police stations are reformed, other reforms may not actually benefit people. So do those people feel that this is our police station? That's the level of achievement, that's the kind of uh, involvement that will show that citizens have some kind of uh, engagement with the police in directing their own safety and security issues. I think the last, if I would mention this in Benin, the police commissioner told the visitors that if you're not satisfied with the kind of services you're receiving here, please feel free to see the commissioner. Now this is the kind of confidence that is raised through these kind of programs. And at, at this, uh, I'll conclude here and ask you all to please uh, participate in the 2014 police station with the week, which is from 3rd to the 9th. To this is 3rd to 9th, uh, 2nd to 8th November 2014. So I don't think we can change. I think in the uh, pamphlet we can share the second to nine, eight, nine. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Rainika Dagar. And she highlighted about the police station reform. And basically, according to her, and that this is based on the personnel, it is based on the good governance, that is transparency, accountability, and performance based incentive, capacity to maintain law and order, and institutional mechanism. At the last, she suggests uh, lessons of lessons to improve the uh, police uh, police station accessibility, service delivery outlook, outlet, women rights situation voice phone, co-ownership, and so on. Once again, thank you, Dr. Renuka. And while listening to our presentation, I want to highlight is a, one of the supervisors in the Gorkha district, but is not a like standard of the European standard, but the position and the service delivery, that commitment in this station is very high. And uh, the initiator of this station, police Gorkha district, and the Mr. Balukati is here. He is the one initiator to reform this, to make this uh, station one more functional. And when you go enter to the station, at the, at the gate there is a help desk. May I help you? There is, there is one thing. And when you enter into the into the station, and there is a very well furnished, there is a photo also you can see, there is a well, well furnished garden. And when the people enter into the, that blooming garden, and uh, automatically his or her pain that nonsense thinking will be removed. This is the psychological, uh, the psychological perception given by the station. And the third one, when we enter into the detention room, in other stations that I think there is a kind of smelly smell is coming. But in the Gorka districts, the detention room, we are quite fine. There is no, but what you said, there is no eating, eating, this is not the action, but there is a, that they caught and food, uh, sorry. Basic food, living food, conditions food. are yeah. better. And then uh, it is very airy, airy condition and aeration is the very important part. And uh, they are happy there. The detainees also are very neat and clean. <laughs> this is another point. Look like. And then uh, such kind of per perception I, I gather from this police station. And uh, we visit all the room of this station and all the all the personal police personnel said, what can I help you? Like this word begins and then that's why you people feel very easy, accessible, and there is not only this, what kind of role should do the, the visitors should do? This is written in the debate and the deep board and such kind of arrangement. In overall the police station was very neat and clean. Whatever our situation that in such situation it is very neat and 
that's why I in, I was very much interested. This is which station I asked, <laughs> right? And that that was that that was the, uh, my impression in the in the in the work uh, I did station. Books be continued. Next speaker here, I would like to request uh, ESP Mr. Surbabu Kaki, DP or not, right now he is in District Police Officer Bara, Nepal Police, and the his topic is policing in Nepal, crime control and its desirable. And uh, he is basically our student and uh, he is writing cases under our supervision and he is our student as well. Thank you very much. Distinguished guests, I'm not spending much time to address everybody here. So I will go to the topic immediately. Today's my topic is policing in Nepal, crime control and its challenges. Uh, since I'm deployed in the district police office in the Bara, and the project flew away from the Kathmandu, and my professor called me to prepare a presentation uh, in terms of uh, policing in Nepal in reference to the, your own district where you are working. So basically, my presentation is uh, uh, concerning my day-to-day -day work. So I will share my experience also. Uh, and actually, we have a different type of type of uh, uh, terrain in Nepal, from up to the mountains to the lowland of the Karai. So we have a different kind of problems, different kind of challenges, and uh, uh, we do similarly. We do different kind of policing to cover to cover all these crimes and policing. Uh, but my one is uh, related to the uh, downstate. Please. So basically, first Nepal police are responsible for the responsible for doing some uh, duties uh, through the different legislators legislations. The first is law enforcement, and then security of lives and properties of the people and protection of human rights, crime control and investigation, traffic management, security of vital installations, VIPs, deployment, development infrastructure and public utilities, and similarly, the rescue and security in the disasters. Uh, guided by those legislations, we have some our own institutional, institutional priorities, which are, as uh, mentioned there, this is the first and foremost, the law enforcement. The second is, uphold the rule of law in the country, and then protect, not only protect, also promote the human rights of the people, Similarly, increase public confidence in the people which was somewhere lost or died, deviated in the past. And then re-strengthen the police organizations. The, and and the, the, the other thing is the guarantee of the fair and professional police service as you, uh, you, you, you see in the past in the visitors week on the police stations. And we are not the exceptions uh, in the in bad condition of the stations out there. So as I'm talking about the policing in the Nepal, so I just uh, give a glimpse of the evolution, how we, we come in this place today, and how we, uh, uh, how we go step by step. And this is the, only the glimpse of the police headquarters, what is the organization structure, how we work, uh, how our uh, policy makers uh, stay in the hierarchy. And this is the map of the Nepal. And this is the place uh, where I'm uh, working right now. This is this is the uh, this is the the, the, the the plain land of the Nepal, uh, which is uh, along with the border of the India and Nepal. Uh, please go. Ahead. The total area of my district is 1,263 square kilometer, with 700,000 people stay uh, there. Uh, and I am commanding uh, now 643 police personnel uh, to serve all these 700,000 people. So you can imagine the situation over there. The northern part of uh, this district is covered by the forest, and it's a, a hill area. It's called Shure, the uh, the young mountain over there. And then southern part is the plain land, it's just 60 kilometers east-west, with the open international border with India. 
in the Bihar, state of Bihar. The, uh, I, why I am uh, overhearing the uh, Bara district? Because all these things is related to the police, policing and the crime. It's, it's uh, equally related uh, how the crime is flourishing in the district. To know these things, we must have to know about uh, this uh, social, economic, and geological fact also. So, aboriginal lands are fertile and agricultural products are high. So, somehow the people are economically sound uh, in, the, in the district. More than one third of the industry of the whole country lies in the district. So it shows that the, the capacity, the purchasing capacity of the people is a little high in compared to other prior districts. And the rate of but the rate of education and literacy is relatively lower than other prior districts. If this is the contradictory view, uh, we can see that, but this is the true fact because people are engaged in the farm because of the fertile land and agriculture based industry and then uh, whenever uh, people go to their teaching years they are forced to work in the factories and other things to earn the money for the family so this caused all the hand the, the, the drop rate of the school schooling is the very high industry in addition to that relationship be between both sides of the border to get shelter to each other is very favorable favorable because we don't have any fences or we don't have any any physical uh, border within the country and uh, we have a cultural and uh, family relations with both parts of the country so it's it's a very conducive situation for the people to take shelter to each other not only the Nepalese criminal get, get, get shelter in India it's a vice versa the Indian uh, criminal also come to Nepal and get shelter from their relatives and family members and other is experienced sensitive incident in the past such as kidnapping, illegal weapons, murder, narcotics and counterfeit due to the open border. Because of this, these things, uh, we are experiencing all this uh, problem. The trending and what is the crime uh, trending in the district, especially in the Bara? Uh, the first and foremost is the proliferation of small arms. Being a open border and then Bihar some uh, say, uh, towns of the Bihar, they are producing the small arms in the, as, as a cottage industry. We can say it. We, 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 we are bound to say that. And we uh, complain many times when we sit together in the counterpart meetings. And then other is the smuggling of counterfeit currency and narcotics. Actually, the cannabis type of narcotics goes from the Nepal, which uh, produces uh, uh, in the barren land of the mountains and then they take away from the, uh, our places to the India and then medicated drugs come from the India and we both are uh, what I say uh, we both are very suffering from these types of uh, narcotics because we don't consume the uh, contraband like uh, cannabis and other things uh, and the Indians, the counterpart in India they are using a lot similarly the medical drugs is not very it's famous in India but our young generation is using these things. Similarly, the illegal, illegal, sorry, extortion, threat calls, and kidnappings, and sometimes uh, kidnapping. The threat calls and extortion sometimes goes to kidnapping. If they don't obey or, or they don't do this uh, first two, then sometimes they do kidnapping. Because it's very easy to take them away to the India and call them and get ransom. ransom. Similarly, the illegal trading and smuggling of wildlife and forest product. Since our district, the Bara district, is very yeah, rich in the fauna and flora because the northern part of the whole district is covered by the national park, uh, which is very famous for the one horned one rhino. And then the smuggling of the one horned rhino uh, is, is, is. But now, from last two, three years, we are celebrating the zero poaching year. Uh, lucky. <laughs> Similarly, human trafficking is the is the another problem in our district, especially in the northern part of the Bihar. In the celebrations, in the marriage celebrations, in all the celebrations, they call for the orchestra. With some band parties, they do uh, the whole night the uh, orchestra, and then sometimes they, they they cross the limit of vulgarization and other things. And the innocent girls, minors from the uh, mountains who, uh, does, who never uh, go to the school 
and uh, who don't know about all these things, they, uh, they, what, they, they take them take to the India saying that they are doing a, a very good job of dancing, but uh, uh, in, 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 in contrary, they use them as sexual exploitation over there uh, in the name of orchestra. And similarly, the smuggling of goods, because, uh, because to the, to, just to evade the taxation, customs, we are open border, so people are, it's very lucrative job for the people uh, on the border. And the other one is the domestic violence and the other social crimes. We are adjoining to the Northern Bihar, and uh, the rate of education, literacy rate is very, literacy rate is very low, so the social crimes are very really rampant, uh, like in, in Bihar. And the social, and nowadays, the dowry are the face as like in India, and now we are also uh, trending towards the honor killing for some times. Uh, right, right now, we are experiencing from the last few years. Next. I'm just uh, uh, taking the glimpse of this uh, crime trend in the district. Uh, as I'm uh, presenting in my, on behalf of my district, so I'm, I just wanted to show you the uh, situation. Yeah, yeah, sorry, sorry, sorry to that. <laughs> sorry to that. Next. And this is the month-wise month uh, case registration in the district, in the, in the, in the comparatively three yearly comparative chart. And the other one, other one is the daily wise comparative chart of three years kind. So generally, uh, we all are not, not from the police, so uh, I just wanted to show the how, uh, uh, how you pay, basically, generally, how we do uh, in the policing, how they are, uh, what kind of models of policing uh, all over the world are uh, popular. Uh, policing is uh, not, uh, not uh, rocket science. I can say it's rocket science. It's not rocket science. It's a uh, social uh, issue, and we cannot define uh, the policing in the four or five or six models, uh, it can uh, go beyond. But usually, generally we, we do policing in the, uh, in the, in the six, uh, six models, which the first one is the problem-oriented uh, policing. This policing is, uh, is not related with the criminal justice system. Well, what we do is, uh, we learn a lesson from the last, the, new, uh, the latest happening problem, and try to solve this engaging the other stakeholders and then uh, the pri private sector. The, the second one, uh, situational crime prevention. This is not a model of policy. Rather, uh, this, is, this is the thing which, uh, which deter uh, the offender that I cannot escape uh, after doing my offense uh, because, of the, uh, because of the use of sophisticated uh, equipment in this, in this situation. So, Using the CCTV camera and other forensic or other scientific aid uh, comes uh, in, in this category of policing. Third one is the intelligence based policing, which is the best known uh, policing all over the world. Uh, the third one, the fourth one is the broken window policing. Uh, actually, uh, this is the only the jargon is the bro broken window. Uh, what uh, what they say that uh, uh, if you uh, ignore the small mistakes, it can lead the major crime. So, uh, whatever uh, we can take action, we have to do it uh, when it's a small thing uh, happen in the street. Uh, so once you ignore the, street the mistakes of the street children, uh, the later they can uh, be a, a major criminals. The other one is the zero tolerance policing, and this is the uh, traditional traditional. This is called uh, this is called uh, how how I describe it? street type of. Uh, enforcement of policing and uh, this is the very much uh, critical from the uh, human rights uh, perspective and the last one is the traditional policing traditional policing not exactly not other model uh, rather it, it is the combination of all these policing which say the high vigilance uh, random patrolling uh, follow up of investigations and all these traditional things of policing uh, comes under this uh, traditional model of policing and actually, uh, we, we, do, we do two kinds of policing. Uh, within the uh, six, 
uh, we are focusing on focused on this two types of policing. The first one is the uh, problem oriented policing uh, in the support of the other stakeholders and then and the private sector uh, and then community. And then and the next one uh, and next one uh, is the intelligence led policing for to curb the uh, organized crime and then high profile crimes, white collar crimes and other uh, murder and high uh, high type of crimes. So what are the challenges at present? I'm discussing the challenges uh, we are facing in the district uh, as, a, as a police scholar. Uh, for the first is the political instability. Being a citizen of South Asia and then uh, the uh, undeveloped country and then uh, additionally in country in transition. Uh, the tendency of the disobey in the law is a sign of prestige nowadays. It is uh, misery to say. Uh, so another one is the misuse of right-based approach. Actually, there are several kind of activists working in the country. Uh, they, they, they have their noble cause inside, but usually they don't do, they don't stay in the ethics. Sometimes they go beyond, and then this right-based approach sometimes derails the police policing in the district. And then other one is the emerging non-state actors and group in the political cover. We have so many armed outfits, outfits in the far right and some also in the, in the mountain uh, areas. Uh, even though the major uh, political, major outfit came in the political name uh, and now they, they also rule the country. But still there are some uh, similar type of small outfits are working uh, in the district. The second challenge is uh, I categorized in the sec uh, name of security. One is the forest criminality in the, in the security diagram of the past. Uh, as you know, we are in the transition for what? Being, uh, being a victim of 10 years of people's war, in the name of people's war, uh, we lost uh, many police stations. We, uh, the many places of the country gone out of the grip of the police. So, uh, because of that uh, security vacuum, uh, the criminality flourished uh, within the police periods. And then some paramilitary outfits of political parties further eroding the confidence of public towards legal law enforcement agencies. They work as a parallel law enforcement agent in that battery. So people in the, in the, in the remote places where uh, the, the police could not reach in, that, in, those place, in those time, they think that they are the one who, who can uh, rescue them from their problems. And then proliferation of small arms, as I discussed before. And then easy access for heat and run because of this open border situation. And then third one is the crime. The organized crime is now taking place uh, and then uh, succeeding other, other type of crimes. Uh, because nowadays, we don't have experience in the traditional type of crime. Nowadays, people are not killing each other in the uh, in, the, in, the, in the quick sentiment, or they are not killing people in the name of family dispute. Because nowadays, all the incidents are happening, the only one cause behind this is the money. And the money, they are now organizing the small groups, are like, uh, the, like the small arms, the proliferation of the small criminal gangs are taking place in the country too. And then, the, the nature of crime is also expanding beyond the country. Uh, this is death law and the challenge. And the socio-economic situation is also one of the challenges of the, the district. There is, I also may, already mentioned that the lower rate of education in the district, unemployment plus brain drain, people are not staying. We are not retaining our, uh, our, our uh, talent in the, in the country, in the district, increasing Hardline mindset in caste, in the name of caste, reason, religion, and gender. So we are the, 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 the new generation, the new breed, because of this violence, culture of violence in the past, we are uh, making our mindset in a radical way, changing our minds in a radical way, uh, in, in any name, uh, you can say in any name. And then another one is the haphazard organization and materialistic tendency of the people. This is uh, the, another uh, challenge of the police to call the crime and do the policing. 
And the last is the law and uh, rules, the lack of appropriate and updated legislation. Uh, we, we are already pointed out to the government to change to amendment uh, and then some to introduce the new law uh, for, for the meet cope challenges of the today's policy. Similarly, lack of coordination with the components of criminal justice system. We have a, a little differences, or we can say not very much harmonious in all the district uh, as, 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 a part, as a part of the criminal justice system. And similarly, lack of coordination within other public service providers. To do policing, we have to be uh, we have to take uh, assistance from the different public sector uh, of the government sector, public sector and the government sector. And sometimes we did not get support, coordination, cooperation on timely manner, uh, which hampers policing directly. Those are the uh, those are the external challenges I, I, I talked before. The, the challenges that present internally inside the policies, uh, I divided into three, four categories. The first is technology, where the, the crime, the criminal tendency, now the crime is uh, taking assistance with the new technology, and new uh, use of new information technology, but we are very behind, behind from the criminals. We are not very much able to catch all, all their uh, tendency and all their uh, the criminality through the information technology. So we are very poor in terms of information technology. Uh, similarly, communication is one of the part of the uh, information technology. And then third one, the investigation. Uh, it's still, we are it's still we are investigating in the trap and in the, in the traditional way. Uh, we don't modernize our investigation capacity. We are not able uh, to make people people to combat the new new breed of uh, investigative methods and other things. And similarly, the management. The other one is the infrastructure and resources, which is the important part to curb the crime or to, to do the policing. Uh, uh, like we don't have the physical facilities, um, enough transportation, enough equipment. We don't have a, a money. To, to follow all these, follow the investigations and uh, policing as he already uh, saw in the visitors uh, week, the condition of the uh, police stations, uh, except the work. <laughs> and, uh, and the human resource, which is the important part, even though we have technology and, uh, and the resources, uh, the recruitment, somehow we changed uh, our recruitment process. Now there is no more uh, problem in the recruitment. But the development of human resource uh, in terms of the training, uh, on the job training, or the, uh, or the, or, 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 or the classroom training, or um, similarly the exposure uh, in, the, in the developed country, in the experienced uh, country, and similarly the motivation to retain the people. Now the frustration is taking place in the many good officers uh, in, the, in, the, in the police. So the, the challenges, the, the other challenges is the motivation to retain the good people uh, inside the institution. So these are the challenges and uh, how to go. I, 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 in everything there is a, a causal relationship. I don't have to describe the causal relationship. So we have a challenges, in, I, I mentioned describing the, these kind of challenges we have. So, how to cope with the challenges? And uh, I just I wanted to mention uh, in this way, the, as an environment, in the environment we have to do the adequate legal framework. Uh, we have to uh, get the strong and form government policies. We have to have political commitment, people's awareness and compliance of law, coordination with other security agencies, and the importantly, the media so Whatever you do, if people don't know, then it's useless. I think so. Media support is another important thing to cope this uh, policy issue. And then another is the external factor: capability and capacity of the police, building up police, which is which is the human resource quality and standard, 
well equipment, well resource, well facilities, upgraded morale, and then job security. These are the things which we can do internally. Thank you very much. Thank you, Justice Sorba Alkati. He presented very well, and the kids uh, presented the case study of Bara district. And uh, in the Bara district, uh, the, uh, the crime is increasing, proliferation of the small arms, small smuggling, extortion, women, women trafficking. Such kind of things are uh, happen due to socio due to political stability, uh, security, organized crime, socio-economic condition, and these, these are the external factor and internal factor where technology, infrastructure, human resource, these were the, and he also cited to cope such kind of, such kind of challenges that are adequate legal rules should be there, government policy should be, and the policy, political commitment media support, capacity building, and so on. So, and thank you, Mr. Babu Kaki. And he presented very well and comprehensive in a case history of Bara district. Uh, all right. I will, I will next speaker here. I would like to invite ESP Mr. Ramanandar Singh. Uh, Punjab, Punjab Police Station. And the Punjab Unique Community Policing Partnership Program, the Sanja, Sanja Kendra and its implication for citizen oriented policy. Welcome, Ramanda. Good morning, friends. Uh, I would like to tell you about the project San. San means to work jointly with the help of public and the police to involve the public with the help of public to solve their social problems. And in community policing, we, with the help of our respectable citizens, different parts of our, different persons of our, our society, in which we include our former police officer, health related persons and person from NGOs, etc. So we with the help of these all persons solve the problems of general public. At present, there are 27 districts in the state of Punjab. There are 27 districts in the state of Punjab, and we have 93 subdivision level sun kinders and 149 police station level police outreach centers. And uh, in the district level, it is called community. CPRC, Community Policing Source Center, and it, uh, at the subway level it is called Sound Kendra, and at the police station level it is called Police Outreach Center. So, and this was introduced in the year of 2011. Uh, this act was come into force when our uh, what did PC come 
ਪੰਜਾਬ ਸ੍ਰੀ ਸੁਖਬੀਰ ਸਿੰਘ ਬਾਦਲ ਇੰਟਰੋਡਿਊਸ ਦਿਸ ਨਿਊ ਫਿਨੋਮਨਾ ਟੂ ਦਾ ਜਨਰਲ ਪਬਲਿਕ ਵਿਦੀ ਵੀ ਆਰ ਸਟਿਲ ਗੋਨ ਬਾਈ ਦਾ 1861 ਪੁਲਿਸ ਐਕਟ ਵਿਦ ਦੀ ਪੈਸੇਜ ਆਫ ਟਾਈਮ ਵੀ ਵਰ ਨਾਟ ਏਬਲ ਟੂ ਵੀ ਆਰ ਨਾਟ ਏਬਲ ਟੂ ਗੋ ਟੂ ਫੁਲਫਿਲ ਆਲ ਦਾ ਡਿਮਾਂਡਸ ਆਫ ਪਬਲਿਕ ਦ ਫੀਅਰ ਆਫ ਪਬਲਿਕ ਇਨ ਦ ਪੁਲਿਸ ਡਿਪਾਰਟਮੈਂਟ ਵੀ ਵਰ ਨਾਟ ਰਿਡਿਕਟਿਡ ਸੋ ਵਿਦ ਦੀ ਇਨ ਦ ਪੁਲਿਸ ਡਿਪਾਰਟਮੈਂਟ ਦਿਸ ਕਮਿਊਨਿਟੀ ਪੋਲਿਸਿੰਗ ਵਨ ਵਾਸ ਇੰਟਰੋਡਿਊਸ ਐਂਡ ਦ ਪਾਵਰ ਪੁਲਿਸ ਇਨ ਦ ਸਿਵਲ uniform work in the san kendra and they have a different uh, uniform other than the police working in the police station and they are having a white shirt and a dark brown trouser and a same color turban and they have a neck tie and badge of uh, our government police and they work from 9 pm to 9 am to 5 pm except sunday there are six working days the working of this community policy and the three types of uh, problems generally uh, problems related to domestic violence and uh, dowry related and uh, drug abuse these and other local issues are generally resolved at the, the san kendra
This is the institutional structure of Sant program, and our it is work on under Bharti ADGP. Now is uh, rank of DGP rank. Sri S K Sharma is heading our department of this community policy, and one Bharti IG and two DIGs, one DIG AIG, and this is the. I am working as a PST community policy officer of SP rank. In each 27 district, one SP rank or DSP rank officer is required to supervise the working of San Kendra in the whole district. And at subdivision level, district level, subdivision level, and police station level, these are the levels of working of the San Kendra. Next. State owned and statutory mandate. It is uh, the uh, community policing is working under the Punjab government, Punjab police, and it is uh, with the help of public. It is an institutional effort to integrate community policing with the existing police system owned by state government and also have statutory mandate as an incorporated police act 2007. And uh, I would like to tell you that uh, each Community policing uh, level police sans kendra is registered under society act. Under society act, it is registered. Registered under society act uh, standardization. There are certain modules under which it is working. Accessibility is a person. A person can. I have already mentioned. A person can visit any sans kendra subdivision level or police station level. It is working from nine to five, and a person can lodge his complaint even online. If there is a no problem of jurisdiction. If some crime is happened in Ludhiana, and he can. Uh, just get lodge his complaint by sitting here in the Kathmandu. We can lodge complaint, online complaint. At the, if any crime is committed in the district of Ludhiana, Amritsar, and if a unique ID number is given into the each and every complaint, whether it is uh, given in person or online complaint. It is an autonomous register society, as I have already told. Autonomous register society, collectively managed by the representative of community and police functionary. It is, a, we have a representative of a, all the society, different parts of society members, just as a, a ladies, advocate, NGOs, and mostly we are, we have included the person who are non-political, having non-political background. So can, they cannot, so that they may, are not be biased, so that she should not be biased in solving problems which involve community. Next. This, uh, police management system made accountable and efficient. As it is mentioned, uh, it is uh, tenure fixed for two years, and uh, fixed working hour. And they are the, all the person who are deployed uh, in the community policing. They are part, though they are part of our police department, but they are not performing other law and duty, VIP duties. They are assigned work only just to perform their duties in the community policing. And uh, this is the uh, monitoring mechanism as I have told under, under the supervision of the DGP. One entire setup is made up, it is included an IG's DIG rank officer. And uh, our evaluation at the district level, uh, state level it is uh, monitored by what uh, very learned persons. The, every 
person will have his name tag on the shirt mentioned as I just mentioned. This is the uh, conference of our San Kendra uh, Community Policing Source Center at the police station level or survey level. And the uh, conference number 203 is mentioned, and each, each and everything is mentioned that uh, these type of services are provided at uh, the police station outreach center. And the uh, people I have already mentioned that 30, uh, 1 lakh 59,000 services are already provided up to the 30th June 2014. This is the, and uh, I would like to add, there are approximately 5% who are included, including one in charge to the rank of sub inspector or inspector is posted at the sub level, sub And uh, all other work is uh, Online and Wi Fi connection, Wi Fi connectivity, uh, broadband connection, and one central network is uh, situated at uh, Ludhiana. And we have all, all Sanj Kendra, sub level, district level, police station level, they are all having connectivity. A person can, this is the just uh, uh, mentioned in complaints, counter number one, and left is FIR and DDR. Uh, I would like to add uh, one more thing, a person, a person can, a person can get any services, any services by visiting the police department, 25 services are there included, including the registration of uh, FIR, logging of complaints, uh, getting NOC, for registration, these are certain I, uh, services which are provided at the police station level. And this is the uh, existing level. This is the each and everything, each and every uh, Sanj Kendra has its uh, own. Uh, this is the same building. It will have in the logo of CPRC and the flag and uh, its own flag is there. And this is the uh, model of our building. These are the uh, these are the different uh, views of uh, CPSC Community Policing Source Center and uh, Police Station Outreach Center. CPSC. It is a sub level I have mentioned ex officio four members and non official fifteen members. These fifteen members are taken from the general public and uh, they are from uh, expertise in their own field. They are they with the help of these fifteen non official and four official members to resolve the problems of the community. And uh, uh, at the police station of the center, we have uh, ex officio five members and ten members are non official members. And uh, it is not mandatory that all these 15 or uh, 15 or 25 persons are present there. And there is uh, approximately two third persons are generally get together and solve the problem. Two third persons are supposed to be present. This is the uh, classification of members, uh, one district community policing officer, referring to the SP or DSP, community uh, representative, co-convener, and uh, these are the members. These are the backbone activities we emphasize on these services. Like NOC, no objection certificate for art license, permission for religious critical procession. These are the services which a public uh, uh, is uh, required. And in this, uh, no police activity is uh, required. So these are services are provided at the, our community policing sanctuaries.
verification of registration of vehicles, payment verification, registration of servant, and uh, another part is the uh, dispute resolution. Dispute resolution is the counseling with the help of uh, these members for uh, domestic violence, married dispute, economic fence, minor economic fence are mentioned, legal aid victim relief, NRA issue, non-resident Indians issues, uh, women officer to avoid incentive questioning. Uh, we usually do not call the women to the police station and they, their problems are solved at their own, their own place of residence. Grievance redressal. As I have mentioned, online complaints can be given. So, victim assistance, if a victim, the name of the, in the case of molestation, rape cases, the name of the victim is never published and uh, her counseling is also the victim system. First aid facility, ambulance service, professionally qualified doctors, psychiatrists, psychologists, um, they do the, their best. Awareness regarding rights. Because uh, we are still governed by the Thala Sokar 1861 police sector, so this is a new concept and uh, we are going to going again and again to the public for awareness. Because uh, this is not easily, uh, people are not 100% aware about their rights in the South Kinta. And uh, we will continue, this is a continuous process, it will be continued in the future also. This is our uh, in charge at subdued level, having the uh, grievance and the submitting grievance. Next one.
In this way, we are uh, using the community resources, tapping the community resources, uh, using the community uh, potentials to solve the uh, problems. Uh, so specifically, uh, talking about policing, we solve the policing problems through uh, community uh, approach. Uh, so, uh, so many other fields also in the uh, health sector, in forest sector, in education sector, in so many other sectors, this community approach have been uh, applied and uh, significant progress also in observed. Uh, so Nepal Police has also started applying, adopting this uh, community policing approach uh, in our day-to-day -day, uh, activities. Uh, uh, I have uh, to acknowledge a uh, few differences which I took from the previous study of Alimbal Singh, Gurushal Thapa and few of the data from which it was research and planning division. So first of all, <coughs> I have to we call those uh, pioneers who work in uh, community policing, uh, like Sir Robert Peel, who was uh, working in London Metropolitan Police in 1839. So he, he is the pioneer uh, in community policing uh, in London Metropolitan Police. He introduced this, actually he introduced the Metropolitan, uh, Metropolitan Police Act and worked a lot. And uh, Kobans, from Japan, uh, they are also uh, doing this door-to-door uh, -door police, and we are a uh, little bit uh, connected with them because uh, the Japanese the government they provide a uh, few training and uh, other programs with us. So every year, a few of our officers go to participate in the training and uh, get familiarization with the Koban system in Japan. Uh, similarly, the neighborhood the police in Singapore. Uh, so, uh, if we talk about Nepal, uh, we have, for the first time, we have this uh, Symmetry Prohari system, which was introduced by the then IGP, late D.B. Lama. Uh, so, this was the very first uh, <coughs> type of uh, community activity which was introduced in Nepal. Mm. And, of course, uh, I have heard a lot about uh, Chief of Punjab Police, uh, K.P.S. Gill. Uh, he did a lot here. And uh, I, should, I don't know uh, when the book was published. There is a book about Super Cop, uh, KPS Gill, and he used community approach and some other approaches to solve the terrorism. So, as I talked uh, earlier, the Shimeki Prahari, or the door to door system, was the first uh, type of uh, community activity launched by Nepal police. Uh, so it was based uh, on the Singapore's uh, neighborhood system. Uh, it was uh, kind of ambitious type of uh, policing system because it couldn't continue uh, for a long time. Uh, it was introduced at that time. So every district was instructed to visit every doers and collect the problems, what the people are saying, what the problems they have. So they collected all the problems, they submitted the reports to their higher authorities and uh, after all the problems remain the same. So uh, this scheme was not much effective and uh, after the 1990s revolution the restoration of democracy, uh, we started uh, the institutionalization of uh, community policing uh, activities. Mm, but unfortunately, we had uh, a decade long insurgency, uh, and as my earlier colleague he, he told about it, and, uh, we have to march from different uh, police establishments to the district headquarters, so the places remain back end. So there were no security activities. Uh, so again, we have to uh, uh, shrink. Uh, so it took uh, some time to expand again. So this was the problem. And uh, later, gradually, as the uh, political process was uh, going uh, in a very uh, positive direction, and and then the uh, security post police stations were established, then again uh, the uh, 
community uh, police stations uh, were established again. Uh, so, as of now, there are 147 community police service centers and uh, some more than 500 police persons. They are working in uh, different uh, community police uh, centers. So, if we see the organizational structure, uh, in Nepal Police Headquarters, we have a Criminal Investigation Department, uh, CID, under which there is a Crime Prevention Bureau, and we have a Community Police Division, which is headed by Senior Superintendent of Police. So all these uh, community police stations come under this uh, division. Uh, so there are Community Police uh, Service Center in uh, uh, Metropolitan Police, Kathmandu Metropolitan Police, and in several other districts as well. Uh, you all are familiar, uh, there is no need to stress that uh, this is, uh, our country is a multilingual, multicultural uh, and uh, diversified nature, our society. So, uh, uh, there are marginalized uh, groups in the society and to strengthen the justice process, to, uh, to strengthen the access to justice, to build the uh, relation, to build the trust with the community, uh, this community-based policing approach is now adopted. It is in the uh, policy also, it is also uh, proclaimed in the uh, policy of the police headquarters also. Uh, so, uh, uh, to improve the effectiveness of uh, these uh, community approach, uh, community centers, we have to uh, have effective leadership uh, from the police and from the community as well. And we have to understand the local context, what is the local need. Uh, so, uh, there is a approach in policing local need policing. So, if there is a problem of uh, alcoholism in the community, then we have to focus on that. If there is a problem of domestic violence, then we have to focus on that. So, it is uh, uh, visualizing the local need. Uh, so, enabling access to justice, it also it helps to enable people to access the criminal justice system. Uh, creation of uh, public uh, police, uh, police public forum through assembly of the community members and representatives. Uh, this is uh, the basic thing. And uh, from this forum, uh, we derive uh, several priorities and our areas to work. Uh, uh, so the process, how we uh, establish the community uh, police force, it's like, uh, first of all, we do the, uh, uh, if there is a uh, realization that we, we need uh, some kind of uh, community policing center, then uh, uh, there is a feasibility study, uh, there is a, we, we create one forum with the uh, police and public, and then uh, we make a statute, and then we, we register uh, the institution. So, it's like, uh, NGO also. So it's a uh, it's like NGO which is uh, made up from the community people and the police. So it's not uh, NGO, but uh, the process, the statute, it looks like NGO because it's more independent. It's uh, self-governed. That's why we, uh, the working procedure they look like. Hybrid type of thing. Uh, uh, so, and it uh, it is focused more on proactive activities. Uh, you know, we we do two kind of things in policing. Uh, there is uh, one hard policing. The another one is the soft policing. So, hard policing is like uh, crowd control, the arrest, search, these kind of things. And soft policing is uh, uh, awareness. Educating uh, the people, uh, 
visiting the schools and uh, prevention and proactive things. Uh, so, we do the partnership uh, in, uh, and enforcement and problem solving. And government and community resources are mobilized. Uh, one of the specific uh, character of this uh, is the community uh, center have the essence of power, the legal power. And at the same time, they have the resources from the society. So it's very much effective to solve the problems. They have the legal power, enforcement power, and at the same time, they have the resources, the potentials of the community. Uh, so it is, uh, it is a joint venture between the uh, citizens with uniform, which we call police, and police uh, without uniform, which we call citizens. So it's a uh, joint venture type of job. Uh, so there is decentralized decision making autonomy and it's a self problem. Is visiting the community, especially the women. 
the Chapkaya Community Service Center, Birkans. What they are trying to do is they, they ask the excavator from the municipality because they have a chronic problem of uh, drainage, this uh, garbage management. So they use this community uh, service center, they call the municipal authorities and uh, they put this excavator and work on that. Uh, they are involved in this, uh, uh, making the uh, garbage bins, the baskets. Uh, next please. Um, sometimes they do this uh, blood donation program. <coughs> this is, uh, uh, we have uh, some kind of joint work with the Rotary uh, in Pilgrims. Uh, this is one of the community uh, centers, which is uh, in my, my locality, here in Kathmandu. <laughs> this morning I visited this community centre. <laughs> so I took this picture from that community centre. Yeah, this is how they work. So this is uh, the how it is right. So the people are called and they are gathered and uh, how it is about drug problems and some other problems. Uh, this is also uh, our this program, the community representatives uh, and some high profile people, uh, they are also called to address the gatherings. So this is in uh, Pilgrims, uh, we did some exercise with the students of different schools. being faced at the border district or uh, organized crime 
what community engagement in kind of uh, preventive measures and in kind of decision making not to be uh, relevant? Why do you find that exclusion? I mean, uh, to me, uh, maybe that's not so, but from the two presentations and from the issue that came out rather clearly. I so was just wondering if you give us the background on that. Thank you. Actually, I discussed about the overall general policy, what we are doing, what the challenges we are facing in the district, and how we are coping, how can we cope with all the challenges in the last. Uh, but I did not focus on the community policing aspect since my friend, uh, Big Humber, sir, are also going to deliver his speech on this, uh, uh, on this subject. Though I have to mention something uh, which I missed in my presentation, that we have also a uh, uh, women and children service center in our district. Uh, as I told before that uh, there was a big vacant in the security in the past. And uh, similarly, the police were very much critical in the past, being the hard policing in the country. I don't know how, but maybe it's a, a psychological uh, uh, legacy of this violence. We became a little hard in the past. So now we realize all these things and we started doing participating people, involving people, especially in the social type of crime like uh, social violence uh, against the untouchables, cases against the untouchables. Similarly, uh, we have uh, two cases of honor killing in the last five years. Actually, the honor killing is totally irrelevant and uh, we are totally unaware of the, uh, the, that things, but in the last four or five years, we have two cases in the district. That's why I mentioned, because it's a big thing in the society. If the people start following this, it will be a big, big, the, 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 the poisonous situation for the country, for the society. Uh, that's why I, I, I skipped the community policing part since he is covering this. But we have, a, yes, we have a, a women and children service center in our uh, district from last three years. We have a, uh, a big, huge building. I was just wondering, is community policing um, not just outreach, like the blood donation camps or helping in sewage or you know what kind of problem people face? Yes. Is community policing also involved in hardcore security and crime prevention issues? Not exactly. Because we are we are doing only the awareness program uh, for the hard, hard, uh, hard policing and then involving themselves in the soft policing. Like the social problems and other things, they involve directly. Uh, as a mediator or as a negotiator, we use them. We have a woman, uh, uh, woman network working in the district. We involve them in the case of the uh, family domestic violence. Uh, similarly, in the case of the children uh, abuse, abuse of children. And but for the hard cases, the community policing involved only for the awareness campaign. And last uh, last year, uh, when I deployed there, uh, even though it was not our field uh, field priority, but we started the awareness campaign against the child marriage in the district. And it's taking uh, the widest field we are doing these things. Because everything starts from the home. So we want to educate people that don't marry your children in, in minor age, uh, which makes a lot of problem in the, in, when they grow uh, later. So this is the thing. Thank you. Uh, just to clarify, while doing soft policing, like awareness and these kind of things. We are also helping uh, for hard policing because we're collecting the information, uh, visiting door to door, you know, uh, getting information for the uh, new faces in the society or the crime trends in the society. So it helps ultimately to the hard policing. Uh, they are the community police centers. They are not involved directly in the hard policing. They are just visiting, and some community service centers they have. Hired the local security people, which uh, those which are resourceful, they hired some local other security agencies, and they are deployed in the community. Because our uh, our philosophy behind it is the role of the police is uh, as a facilitator uh, and uh, tap the uh, resources from the society and utilize it for the welfare of the society. That's the thing.
going to at the end. Now, I would like to invite my Gurudev, Professor Sri Krishna Srasta, to sum up and just to give word of thanks to the participants. Professor Sri Krishna Srasta. Now, 
Now, all the actors within the country should have equal contribution to provide the 